to National Tourism Debate Competition. We are in our preliminary rounds of the competition. And if you have not heard before, this is your first time tuning, tuning in. We have with us Calabar High, Immaculate Conception, Glenmuir High, Cornwall College, Holland High, Belair High, Charlemont High, Woolmers Girls, Edwin Allen, Jamaica College, York Castle, the Carteret College, Woolmers Girls, Mannings High, Kingston College, and St. George's College. Those are our 16 participants in this year's competition. We are generous for the support of our sponsors and the following sponsors we would like to thank, the Tourism Enhancement Fund, Deja All Inclusive Resort, the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, the GHTA, Royalton Luxury Resort, Chocolate Caribbean, Coral Cliff Gaming Lounge, Pear One Bar and Restaurant, Margaritaville Group, Origin Juices, and Starbucks Jamaica. The 2022 National Tourism Debate is endorsed by the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and the GHTA. Our adjudicators this afternoon is attorney at law, Ms. Tamika Bryce, Donovan Wignall, president of the MSME Alliance, and Ms. Kenya Kadu Lang, destination manager here in Montego Bay from the De Tourism Development Product otherwise called TP Deco. Our mood for this afternoon, this house believes that the craft market industry is a dying sector and offers no real value to the tourism sector. Proposing the mood is St. George's College and opposing the mood is Glenmuir High. Our speakers are St. George's College, Imani Roden, Jordan, Anna and Javon Fagan. And that's St. George's College. Glenmore High, Denicia Lewis, Nehuma Smith, and Tadicia Dawkins. And in reserve, they have Janisa Edwards. The first speaker is allowed seven minutes, second speaker, five minutes, and third speaker three minutes, followed by a rebuttal, which will begin with the opposing team, and that is for three minutes. The match will begin with our proposing team, St. George's College. Let's have a round of applause, please. The coaches and students for making the effort for participation today. We will now proceed with our fourth match in the 2022 preliminaries of the National Tourism Debate Competition. Let us spotlight St. George's College and welcome their first speaker, Imani Roden. Just to be sure, can I be heard? Yes, we're hearing you, Ms. Roden. You may go ahead. Um, I'm waiting on confirmation from the timekeepers when I can begin. Ms. Roden, you can go ahead. Esteemed judges, guests, opponents, and my fellow teammates, a hearty good afternoon to you all. My name is Imani Roden, and I've been given the gracious opportunity of presenting the opening proposition speech of this well-esteemed debate. My teammates and I strongly agree with the aforementioned motion. This house believes that the craft industry is a dying sector and offers no real value to the tourism sector. To introduce our first few points, I'd like to explicate some terms. Craft market is an event where people sell decorative objects that they have made by hand. Tourism is a social, cultural, and economic phenomenon which entails the movement of people to countries or places outside their usual environment for personal or business slash professional purposes. 
value, the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something, and dying, gradually ceasing to exist or function, in decline and about to disappear. My second speaker will reflect on COVID-19 and its impact on the craft industry, along with the fact that the industry has been declining for many prior years. And my third speaker will argue how education and skills relate to the craft market sector dying along with market developments and business growth. To comment, the majority of items sold in the market for arts and crafts and souvenirs are now imported from other countries. The demand of tourists for local and handcrafted ethnologies is well established and common across the industry's numerous subsectors. Despite this potential, the region has been largely unable to capitalize on the economic growth opportunities created by tourism. And thus, the industry's full socioeconomic potential in generating connections that lead to growth in supplementary sectors remaining untapped. This is according to an international nonprofit organization serving the artisan sector, Aid to Artisans. This is especially visible in the market for crafts. The fundamental spirit of the craft market products is no longer what is emerging. Did you know that by the same method that some foods and drinks are imported for consumption, companies overseas will plaster a nation's flag on a clay mug and sell it in the originating country as a handcrafted souvenir? This not only diminishes the country's uniqueness of their items, but it also diminishes the nation's culture because tourists now have no notion if what is presented as regional merchandise is, ad, uh, is as advertised. State Minister in the Ministry, Honorable Damian Crawford, tells JIS News in an interview that we want to see the day when craft items that are sold in the main are not imported. Unfortunately, this is the reality that we currently face. In fact, many of the items are imported from countries where the relevance of the craft is not captured. And by extension, the demand for the craft does not exist. What sense does it make to have a false ideology of what tourists want to experience, like the genuine culture of reggae, which is delivered via music and dance? When tourists have developed interest in traveling to other nations to experience the culture of the country, why should the craft market be a major benefit if it is scarcely adding to the economy? and the items being sold aren't even made by sole Jamaican craftsmen. Let's be realistic. Look at the fact that when we want to say, let's say for instance, buy a Jamaica shirt for Jamaica Day. Nine times out of 10, the craft market isn't the first place to go. You'd rather go to Mr. Chin's store downtown and get it for cheaper. We are no longer supporting the sole Jamaican creators. We are buying unauthentic items so it can save our pockets. To put it in a simpler term, you can't put a bumper sticker on a pro box and call it a Benz, just like you can't sell an item with a Jamaican flag and call it unique. The second argument I'd like to make supports my prior statement and identifies the decrease in gross domestic products in the country as the money earned from the ungenuine product sales will not be reinstated within the economy. Apply on the knowledge for a minute and realize that the imported souvenirs are being offered for way less than the ordinary Jamaican artisan would produce, which is obscene since who in their right mind would pass up a good deal? The monies that would be given to the foreign suppliers aren't going back into the value of the economy. If anything, it is depreciating the economy. For example, the Chinese entrepreneurs who live in Jamaica don't pay taxes. If you didn't know, they get tax write-offs due to their employment of Jamaican citizens. And mind you, the monies they are making are for their own personal benefit. These employers don't give a flying squirrel about what happens in Jamaica, as long as they are getting their money and it doesn't affect their business's progression. We need to strengthen our policies on imported goods to ensure that we promote local crafts which are indigenous to Jamaica. The decline in genuine product sales has been increasingly occurring over the years. A recent occurrence in Ocho Rios on September 25th, 2021, reflected a prime representation of inadequate sales being made. The arrival of two cruise ships in the vicinity did not fulfill the expectations of certain vendors. 
who believed that more should be done to assist the little guy. The arrival of the cruise ships at Ocherius brought hundreds of visitors to the region. The sellers at the craft market set up early and stayed until the rain stopped. Judges, imagine working so hard even when the rain is falling, only to get little to nothing. Nonetheless, several were unhappy with the audience, which they claimed was insufficient to generate strong sales or sales that they'd usually be used to in prior years. If individuals are dissatisfied about the low takeaway for their products in Ocherius, which mind I remind you is in the top three tourist destinations today, Consider the other small entrepreneurs in the more rural areas who have no other source of income to rely on. How will the economy build when money isn't even going back into it, or even the persons who work hard to build it? Let us put aside the monetary benefits of this argument. My fellow opponents, we are not here to argue about others' financial struggles. We are here to argue that the value of the craft market to the tourism sector is depleting and needs some serious otherworldly resuscitation for it to even quarterly benefit the tourist sector, much less the economy. My opponents may argue, when are dead, no for dash way. But we aren't saying that the craft market should be obsolete. We are merely acknowledging that it serves no real purpose when it comes to tourism. With what has been said so far, saying that the tourist industry benefits tremendously from the craft market is quite ludicrous. And my teammates will reassert their stance on their agreement with the move that the artisan market industry is failing and adds little value to the tourism industry and present numerous grounds to support it. I stand firmly on my statement and with much anticipation, the proposition pauses. Thank you very much. First speaker, St. George's College. We will now spotlight Glenn Muir High and invite their first speaker. Ms. Denicia Lewis, you may begin when you're ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you hearing me? Ms. Denicia Lewis, you may begin when you're ready. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Good day, Speaker of the House, members of the government, honorable judges, and fellow members of the opposition. We are here as advocates of Jamaica's craft industry. We strongly believe that it should remain a focus of the Ministry of Tourism because of its economic and social value to communities mm -hmm. and countries at large. What is a craft? Britannica defines it as an activity that involves making something skillfully with your hands. The craft industry is quite extensive and includes handcrafted slippers, basket weaving, poetry, and more. An article by the Association of Caribbean States asserts tourist desire for local and handmade ethologies is widely recognized and continues to be prevalent in the various subsectors of the tourism industry. The Caribbean's multifaceted tourism industry provides a frequent influx of Caribbean enthusiasts, adventure seekers, history buffs, and world heritage aficionados, fueling the growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs, many of which are skilled-based service enterprises producing arts and crafts, local gastronomy, cuisine, and traditional skills such as hair braiding and basket weaving. The craft market industry has many positive effects on Jamaica's tourism industry. As such, we, the opposition, will seek to highlight three of these. As first speaker, I will discuss the economic value of the craft industry. The second speaker will expound on the craft industry's contributions to the revitalization and retention of culture. The third speaker will elaborate on the importance of linkages within the, the craft sector, all of which fall under the broad umbrella of sustainable tourism. We, the opposition, wholeheartedly believe that the craft market industry can be an even bigger and better industry if the government would do more to properly manage and maintain it. The industry is extremely valuable as it holds deep cultural roots and identities and is a tangible piece of our culture that tourists can bring home with them. The craft market industry is said to have high economic value to the country. In an article from 
the Association of Caribbean States titled The Craft Sector in Tourism noted that countries like Jamaica, sales of locally made products to tourists and tourism businesses offer an important source of international exchange and a means of channeling revenues from tourism back into national and local economies. This shows that the craft industry is very important in job creation, linkages, and the prevention of leakages. Many people from all over benefit from it, especially locals in tourism-centered areas. They continued by saying that the Jamaica craft sector and the tourism industry have always had a symbiotic relationship as the collection of souvenirs and mementos is a popular activity for majority of visitors to the island. The economic value of the craft industry generates for the tourism sector and the, the country at large can be broken down into three subheadings, the orange economy, pro poor tourism and job creation. First, let me elaborate on the orange economy. It is defined by Santander.com in an article titled, Orange Economy, What Is It and How Can We Live On It? as a production model where goods and services have intellectual value because they are the product of the ideas and expertise of their creators. All business is rooted in creativity involving avenues like art and culture. In other words, it is business generated from the production of people's creative and entrepreneurial ideas. The craft industry is a big part of the orange economy. According to UNESCO, the orange economy accounts for 3% of the global gross domestic product. Why is the orange economy important to Jamaican tourism? According to the World Bank, between 2002 and 2015, the size of the international market for creative goods doubled to 509 billion US dollars. Data from Inter-American Bank also indicated that in 2015, the orange economy in Latin America and the Caribbean sustained a number of jobs comparable to that by the NPOI. Um, you stated that the orange economy from 2002 to 2015. So what about recent times? No, like, no, what about orange economy? Because I'm sure as Miss... Um, I'm sure that it is not as recent as 2015 is to know 2022. Um, so I'm just I will further explain this in the rest of my speech. Thank you. The orange economy in Latin America and the Caribbean sustained a number of jobs comparable to that generated by the entire economy of Costa Rica and Uruguay. Therefore, handmade slippers, handbags, pottery, figurines, and wooden sculptures, etc., are all important to Jamaica's tourism. The government's value of the craft industry is seen as 2000, seen in 2015 when the government allocated 12.8 million Jamaican dollars in the craft enhancement and business planning training project, which was set up to improve and strengthen the capacity and business acumen of the country's producers. And in 2021, when JBDC developed an initiative funded by UNESCO to enhance the orange economy, both projects work towards innovating the industry. Points of information. No, thank you. Training, educating, and certifying artisans. Yes, with, the, with support, the industry that is at risk can be supported to contribute to economic diversification and sustainable tourism. Secondly, pro poor tourism and job creation. Pro poor tourism is defined as tourism that generates net benefits for the poor. Benefits may be economic, social, environmental, or cultural. This subdivision of tourism provides a number of jobs to people with little to no formal training. The craft industry alleviates poverty by providing jobs to people who are not formally trained, but are still skilled workers because of their craftsmanship. And this shows the linkage between tourism and the poor tourism and the community, and how it aids in poverty reduction. UNESCO called sustainable tourism, tourism that respects both local people, the travelers, cultural heritage, and the environment. This fully encompasses the crafts industry. To many of you, this piece of art may look like just a piece of art. But it is more than that. It is the livelihood of many talented young Jamaicans, specifically one man, Mr. Andy, who spent many years of his life perfecting his craft and ensuring that his shop was a safe haven for youths in his community. According to the National Craft Policy, an estimated 9,943 persons were employed in formerly establishments of craft-related trades and production in 2013. And an Estimated 1,983 self-employed craft traders were registered to operate within 15 resort areas, craft sites across Jamaica as of 2015. Do you think it would be wise to disrupt so many lives and to remove funding from the craft 
industry from the country's budget, not to mention the 1,437 craft sites that would be closed and the 1,983 craft traders that would be displaced. We, the opposition, acknowledge that artisanship has duality, where it, is, where it is a connector to heritage while also being necessary as a part of our country's subsistence economy. With contributions from the government, it can make an even greater impact. I thank you. I thank you. Congratulations to both first speakers of St. George, um, of both schools, sorry. St. George's College, Imani Roden, and Glenmere High, Denise Lewis. We will now spotlight second speaker from St. George's College, Jordan Anna. Good afternoon, just making sure, can everybody hear me? Okay, I'm not sure if anybody's hearing me. Can anybody We're hear me? We're here. You're hearing me? Okay, great. I'm waiting for confirmation from the timekeeper. I'm hearing you as well. All right. You may go ahead, please. Undoubtedly, the proposition stands firm with the mood that the craft market is a dying sector and offers no real value to the tourism sector. To the judges, to the judges, can people, can you stop? I'm here. Okay. Could you please repeat? There was someone, someone just joined and their microphone was open. So you can, you can restart. We're so sorry about that. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me just one last time? Yes, you may go ahead. All right, lovely. Undoubtedly, the proposition stands firm with the mood that the craft market is a dying sector and offers no real value to the tourism sector. To the judges, my opponents, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Jordan Anna Beckford. As we all know, COVID-19 has affected our key economy and society on a whole, especially a sector that is known to flourish in our country, the tourism sector. Now, for months, we were put on lockdown, which put this sector on a pause, leaving persons jobless and demotivated. The GDP fell by an estimated 9.9% in 2020, relative to growth of 0.9% in 2019, the largest decline the country has ever seen. This estimated contraction in 2020 largely reflects the impact of COVID-19 on travel, which had a decline of around 70% in tourism, production, distribution, and entertainment activities. This only dips a little into how much COVID has affected the tourism sector, not to mention its craft sector. A 2021 article entitled Call for COVID Cushion for Craft Sector, written by Gleaner's senior writer in a press states, it is issued Wednesday. Janice Allen, an opposition spokesperson, said that, accepted? You keep repeating and saying the craft market is not only just the craft market, it's the craft industry. And COVID, every every sector went through COVID. So what do you have to say about that? I'll be continuing that on that in my speech. Thank you very much. In a press statement issued Wednesday, Janice Allen, an opposition spokesperson, said that approximately 2,500 craft traders have depleted their savings and are facing an uncertain future. Their fortunes have largely sunk with the downturn in the tourism industry. This not only shows how little the craft market is contributing to the tourism sector, but it also shows what little compensation it grants the laborers. Though COVID did have a major impact on the craft market and the industry, it was already facing economic issues and COVID has only made it worse, as if it could get any worse. Carol McLennan, Vice President of the Harbor Street Craft Market in Montego Bay, St. James, 
states in an article titled, We've Been Living Under COVID for Years, Say Craft Merchants, which was written just two years ago, that we were living under these circumstances from COVID-1 till we reach 19 now. Now I know my opponents may say that COVID was not a main issue, or it might have been a main issue in the building of this industry. But this statement only proves that this industry has been declining for years. Can you imagine suffering for decades? This article also shows that approximately 450 merchants in the popular craft markets have either been out of business or had slow business due to the deadly outbreak. Now, even though at this time they looked forward to the reopening of the sector, they knew it would not be the same. It also points out the little faith that they now have in an industry that had promised them a living. It somewhat reminds me of our manual fans who have so much dedication, but little outcome. McLennan went on to say, for years, we have been promised access to the tourism pie, but not even the crumbs we are given off the table, which sheds light on the decline the industry has been suffering for years, even before COVID-19 had hit. McLennan goes on to explain that weeks after weeks, merchants watch the tourists come off the ship and barely make much as they are usually the last stop on the itinerary, as tourists are more so attracted to the beaches and other attractions. I can only imagine how they must feel like hungry dogs begging for scraps. Others who are frustrated from the out outcomes of the craft market have turned to farming and chicken rearing. This shows how easily crafts are being replaced in the economy. It has been years since the craft industry has contributed to the tourism sector. How much longer will our vendors have to try and stay optimistic? How much longer will they have to look at the brighter side? Because frankly, right now it is looking very dim. Though this sector does provide jobs for some, I am sure my opponents can agree that it is slavery to work for little to nothing daily. Unfortunately, though there has been hope for the craft industry for the past couple of years, it has been doing nothing but draining the economy of its resources and value. They're my oppositions. I don't know if you're blind, but the craft industry is like a mosquito on the back of these cows called Jamaica, and it is draining our livelihood, our blood, the tourism sector. And with that, the proposition comes to another part. Thank you very much. And that was Jordan Anna Beckford from St. George's College. We will now move over to Glenmuir High, Nehuma Smith, second speaker. Ms. Smith, you may start when you're ready. Just for clarification, are you hearing me? Yes, I am. Members of the government, distinguished judges, honorary guests, and fellow members of the opposition, a pleasant afternoon. In response to the points of, in response to the points that the, the government stated, let it be known that the transportation sector declined, the food and beverage sector declined, the accommodation sector declined. All these sectors declined during the COVID-19 pandemic. So do not bully the craft industry into submission. Also, the government is being greedy again by only focusing on the monetary contributions of the craft industry when you have social cultural contributions as well. I have sat here and listened to the government make claims that the craft industry is no longer needed, trying to trample the livelihoods and culture of this country's citizens. The members of this opposition will not stand for that. I am here to assert that the social and cultural benefits of the craft industry is priceless. I am here to implore you to change your mindset and embrace the long lasting benefits that we can derive from this industry. We assert that the industry is not dying. It has done the opposite. Buckle Scott, 2011 asserts that the craft industry has contributed to the revitalization and retention of Jamaica's cultural heritage. We all know that our culture is one of is what makes us competitive. Arguably, 
find. We all know that our culture is what makes us competitive. Arguably, we have the most revered culture in the world. I therefore encourage the government to strengthen the linkages in the industry and use it as a strategic boost for the tourism product and sustainable tourism. With the help of stakeholders, the craft industry, which is at risk, will be positioned to win. The monetary in injections will give the craft industry the most needed assistance to renovate and modernize. The craft industry is indispensable. The ACS asserts that craft is evocative of the local history, culture, and tradition, and thus is inextricably linked to the tourism product and experience of the locality from which it originates. The craft tells the story of the place and the people, thereby generating interest and potential repeat visits. Mm -hmm. This is taken from the article entitled Artisans, Key Players in Jamaica's Tourism Success. Pay attention to the title of the article. Key players in Jamaica's tourism success. Therefore, for tourism in Jamaica to be successful, the craft market is needed. How dare you say that the craft market offers no value to the tourism sector when you, the government, has made little to no effort to keep it going? I assert it. It is a desert of the industry. It enhances the product. Give it due place on the table. If you're going to any store right now and you check the souvenir section, most of the craft items are made in Jamaica. Let me, are made in China, sorry. Let me restate that. Jamaican craft items are made in China. Where is the litigation to protect our national intellectual property? Where is the litigation to sue China that has printed our flags on sandals, breaching the use of the flag? Where is the litigation to Point protect- Point of information. Proceed. I realized that you had agreed with what the proposition had been saying about the fact that they are. Are you hearing us? Hello? Hello. Hello, are you hearing us? Hearing you. Okay. I. So, we'll get so... back to that point. We'll get back to that point. The okay. constant importation of craft items creates unneeded leakages. Hence, the money does not stay in the country. So how do you expect the industry to grow, much less offer value to the tourism sector? The small craft artisans are at risk simply because they're not valued or protected. The government has failed to preserve our identity and protect the vulnerable. So it is evident that Jamaica has failed to uphold the 2005 UNESCO Convention on the Protection and Promotion of Diversity of Cultural Expression, which gives Jamaica the right to adopt cultural policies to protect cultural industries. And without strong legislation, and litigation against bootleggers, the authenticity of items will continue to be at risk. Currently, a vendor is selling the same or identical products on, uh, as those that are in hotels or stores. Therefore, a focus needs to be placed on exclusivity and premium production of craft items than anything else because we cannot mass produce like China. Tourists come to Jamaica for it. Jamaican products. I mean, I repeat, Jamaican products. So let us provide them with the proper craft items they deserve. The craft sector contributes to the preservation of cultural heritage. It enhances tourism products. It builds our identity. It most importantly makes tourism products mm. strategic and sustainable and supports the at risk craft industry. I thank you. Thank you very much. You would have heard from both first and second speakers. I'm asking you, please, um, students, to be mindful of the time. We will now spotlight St. George's College. And we would welcome their third speaker, Javon Fagan.
Mr. Pagan, you may begin. Can you hear me? Yes, we're hearing you. You can go ahead. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, judges, and my fellow opponents. My team has already expounded on some incredible points on why the craft market industry is a dying sector and offers no real value to the tourism sector. And now it is my time to finish it off as your third speaker for today. Education provides a foundation for the cultural and creative industries. Furthermore, without education about the craft industry, how will they know important things such as what to make or even know how to price their product so that people will be convinced to buy and think that it is somewhat something of value? To reiterate what my first speaker stated, nowadays people are disinterested with anything related to the craft market. In Jamaica, we are lacking in the orange economy. In case my opposition does not know, let me educate you on this for a minute. The orange economy is a production model where goods and services have intellectual value because they are the product of the ideas and expertise of their creators. As Minister of Industry, Mr. Ardishaw stated on November 28, 2021, which is, by the way, a recent source he stated that the orange economy is an opportunity in a crisis, which means you can say all you want about craft market doing this or craft market doing that for opportunities, but it is still in a crisis. My second point, which will be about market development and business growth, will be important to listen to and grasp onto. A survey had been taken by the Jamaica Cultural and Creative Industries and during this research, the majority of survey respondents earn personal incomes below 1.15 million Jamaican dollars per year. And may I emphasize the fact that it is Jamaican dollars and not US dollars, so nothing big. With 60% of the persons that were surveyed earning 1.15 million Jamaican dollars per year, with 24% out of that 60%, earning between 100 to 200,000 per year, which is less than 20,000 per month. What is that going to do, my opposition? What? Light bill and water bill alone eat that up. So what about food or even money to take care of their children? Where will it come from? If you look at it from a financial perspective, this sector needs Jesus in order to be revived, but it is certainly dying. I advise you to look at this from our point of view and leave you with this question to think about. What must be running through the opposition team's mind to let them even... Uh, Georges, you're muted. Oh, I'm, very, I'm very, very sorry. Sorry. Now that you have heard what the government has to say regarding this pressing issue, it is up to you to decide whether or not you want to continue to feed on the misinformation that the opposition is dishing out. Finally, with that fitting conclusion, the proposition versus case. I can commend all four schools all four schools, because this morning we had some fiery conversations. We are going to spotlight our third speaker, Glenmuir High, to this year, Dawkins. Are you hearing I me? So you can begin when you're ready. Hearing me? Yes, we are. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, judges, my opponents of the government, and all other viewers. The craft market is essential and multi-leveled. According to UNESCO, Jamaica's cultural and creative industries, CCIs, are estimated to contribute 5.2% of the country's GDP, generating revenues of 2.2 billion Jamaican dollars annually, and accounting for 3% of total employment. But we are not surprised that you believe that the sector has no real value when you have no information to support your argument. The craft industry is very important for economic diversification and competitiveness as it creates employment through entrepreneurship, promotes linkages and increases the multiplier effect among our valuable citizens. And so I strongly con am convinced that the craft industry is not a dying sector and still has real value to the tourism sector. 
Equally important, the craft market is a source of income for many people living in perennial tourist areas who creates employment through entrepreneurship. This industry is a livelihood for many local people making a living and trying to provide for their families. Specifically, the small craft vendors at Duns River Falls or the Rastaman at the end of foreign gully selling these chains, bracelets, wooden carvings, and other pieces of art. Those are things these people express and manage their feelings through. Saying the craft market has no real value to the tourism sector would be greatly disregarding and, and dismissing the Association of Jamaican Potters and well-established craft vendors. All this foreign currency being spent by international tourists in this market is also a win for the country's economy as it is stimulated by foreign exchange. Furthermore, the craft market is a huge contributor in strengthening the linkages in the tourism sector as it requires resources to provide handmade craft. And so it relies on other sectors of tourism for raw material in order to produce these items. This leads to mitigating poverty by providing jobs for the unemployed because if a person can make a hustle from their skills and talents by creating craft pieces to generate an income, it shows how smart our people are. However, it can be argued that there are many weaknesses in the national craft policies, but there are so many other opportunities that are yet to be tapped into. The craft market has done so much in relation to the spreading of cultural roots demonstrating good craftsmanship and creative expression through art and craft. I will reinforce that the craft market has proven to stabilize the craft, the multiplier effect within our society through tourism, allowing money earned to be pushed to every nook and cranny of our economy, increasing as it goes along. You may argue that craft is not the only way for tourists to take back a piece of the country with them, but come on, taking back food won't last any time as food is perishable and only a short-term enjoyment, if we're being honest. But taking back a souvenir brought from our local craft market from their trip can last for a lifetime, whereas it acts as a marketing tool and generates conversation about the product and evoke return visits. Because we should remember that the craft market produces pieces that are unique to us and can only be found here, giving visitors a reason to come just to get their own. So keep our craft market going. The value has not died. It is a huge symbol of our culture and heritage that we value so much. There is room for improvement, likewise investment in this industry, but completely shrugging it to the side is just unnecessary. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We would have heard from all our speakers, St. George's College and Glenmuir High. Just a reminder, the motion, this house believes that the craft market industry is a dying sector and offers no real value to the tourism sector. We would like to acknowledge our adjudicators this afternoon. We have with us Ms. Kenya Kedu, Destina Ken Kenya Kedu Lang, Destination Manager, at TP Deco, president of the MSME Alliance, Donovan Wignall, and attorney at law, Tamika Bryce. Both schools will now prepare their rebuttals. And we we'll pause for a short three minutes.
Okay. Uh, sorry. Good afternoon. Welcome back. We will now take our rebuttals. Welcome back, everyone. All right, are we ready? Can we spotlight Glenmere? Hi. All right, okay. And that's our first speaker, Denise Lutz. You will, you're ready for your rebuttals. You may begin. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You may begin. We just heard the prime minister say that many of our crafts are imported. This shows that it's still of high economic value to our country. The question is whose fault it is for this leakage caused by the importation? You, the government, whom holds the responsibility to create legislation and policies to protect our culture and crafts made by our people. There is absolutely no price on culture as it holds identities of our people. The craft industry is like the red stripe beer to the jerk chicken. It is needed for the enhancement, the social value and the competitiveness of our tourism industry. It is very important to the marketing of our country. The prime minister said that there is no demand for craft. This is a bold faced lie as many tourists buy these memorabilia, to have memorabilia of their trip to our island. I see that the third speaker agrees with me that education is very important to the tourism and craft sector. The, the government has not been proactive enough in getting our sector where it needs to be. They have not been educating and maintaining what they had put in place in our national craft policy. As the government, the policymakers of our nation, cutting what you say is a dying industry is very critical to our country. It is an important element of what makes our community flourish in terms of cultural life, but it is also in terms of creating entrepreneurial and corporate and corporation opportunities. The onus is on you, the government, to maintain the sector. I thank you. Thank you very much. We will now move over to St. George's College for their rebuttal. St. George's College, everyone can hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can, go ahead. Can I get a confirmation from the same people? I'm, I'm hearing you as well. Okay. That's all okay to start? You may begin. Forgive me for yawning. I guess what they say is true. Fatigue is contagious, because right now I'm as tired as your argument. Dear opposition, the picture that you showed was truly beautiful, but how many of those beautiful pieces of art has the artist sold? Has it earned him enough to say that it is a viable means of earning income to sustain him? Once again, side opposition who has sentiment, but lack practicality. The opposition stated that the government needs to do more to support the industry. Judges, they have spent millions on the refurbishing and you expect more money to be spent when it could be spent on, as my second speaker said, the depleting healthcare system. You stated that the craft industry is essential to the tourism sector. Mind I reiterate what I had said earlier. We do not want the industry to be obsolete. We simply want to brighten the dim light that is shown on it. Moreover, your sources weren't recent, which is asinine since COVID, I'm pretty sure everyone is knowledgeable of, a devastating pandemic occurred, which changed everything we've ever been used to. We are speaking of the now, not the past. 
How are we to speak of the past when the industry is currently depleting? This is not 2011 we're talking about. We are in 2022, which might I add is a decade from your sources. I could hear you stuttering, which only shows you have little to no faith in your points, just as how the vendors have little to no faith in the growth of the industry. I must applaud you for agreeing that the products aren't indigenous to Jamaica, which I must say you have much courage to go against your team and contradict your statements. You also brought up that we have no sources to support our statements. I guess you don't believe that the government is a credible source. You must have prepared thinking that we would not have any sources. Pity, we have supported each of our points with, may I add, credibility and relevance. Dear judges, I believe you will rule in the proposition's favor, as we have brought and reiterated various points that prove that the craft market sector has no true value when it comes down to tourism. The craft market has been doing nothing but draining the economy of its resources and value that could be focused on other priorities like our depleting healthcare system. And with what all that has been said on the proposition side, I thank you. Thank you so very much and congratulations to both schools for the research that was put into this motion. I'm going to ask um, Jada to create the breakout room for the judges to deliberate. Now, if it is that the judges are taking a bit too long, we can break and present um, the scores tomorrow or later on this afternoon, but I wouldn't want you guys to be holding too long. I'm going to join the judges in the breakout room to see what the scores are like and how long it will take. So thank you and we will return in just a few minutes. The rooms have already, or they're rather they're open already. So the judges should be seeing the prompt at the top left of their screen to join. Okay, judges, room. just click on the prompt on your screen and join in to the breakaway room, please. And we see that we have some supporters in our chat room for Glenmore High. And we just want to say welcome. <laughs> and thank you for the encouragement. I think both schools did very well.
Besting. <laughs> Can I go for that?
is half done. It's As children, we learn the true meaning of being a hero. Being a hero requires great sacrifice for others. For others, not just ourselves. We learn about the heroes of Jamaica's past and how much of themselves and their lives they had to give in building a nation we should be proud to call home. They believed in a Jamaica that was more than just a country, more than just an island, more than land surrounded by water. They believed in a dream of a free nation of people, a nation built on the foundation of their sacrifices, a nation of many people working as one, a nation that would continue to produce legends and nation builders that serve towards that vision. As children, we were also taught the National Pledge, a solemn promise, an undertaking. I would like to believe Sir Hugh Sherlock, while writing this pledge, understood the vision and dreams of our heroes. It's clear being a hero is too much to ever ask any one citizen. Luckily, the pledge does not require heroics of any of us. It merely asks that we honor our heroes by striving to advance our nation and ultimately inspire the world, like they and many Jamaicans have done. It's important we remember those words. These words. Before God and all mankind, I pledge love and loyalty of my heart through wisdom and courage of my mind, the strength and vigor of my body in service of my fellow citizens. I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace, to work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly, so that Jamaica may, under God, increase in beauty, fellowship and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Jamaican born and raised on this land, maybe you will remember saying those words, singing that song in a classroom or some general assembly. If so, like me, you made a pledge. Somehow it seems like many of us have forgotten that. The crime and violence, the indiscipline and short-sightedness, the corruption, the lack of respect for our beautiful lands we are blessed with and the waters that surround and nurtures us. We have to do better. Let us honor our heroes so that they would not have sacrificed so much in vain. 
I hope this video can make a difference to even one soul. If so, it would all be worth it. If you feel the way I do, share it. May my voice become yours. Thanks for watching.
Jaden, are we ready? Yes, you are, Miss. Okay, we just want to ensure both our coaches are with us and both teams are with us. Yes, St. George's College is present. Titus Maxwell is present. All right, so we're all accounted for. Everyone has rejoined. Okay, welcome back. Our judges had a very difficult time this, well, today, because of the schools we had competing. We had Woolmers Moyes, we had St. George's College, we had Glenmore High, and we also had Jamaica College, who were our second runner-up last year. I, who is it that's presenting? Is it Mr. Wignall or Ms. Bryce? I'm seeing Mr. Wignall on my screen. <laughs> Ms. Bryce. Ms. Bryce is presenting. <laughs> Ms. Bryce is going to be presenting. All right. OK. So Ms. Bryce, how is it for you and other judges? I'm about to introduce you. I say I saw your face when I came in the room, and you're like, this is difficult. This is hard, Michelle. But I know it was a good competition. It was. It was. All right. So I will now ask attorney at law, Tamika Bryce, to present the winning team and whatever feedback the judges may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Law. Good afternoon, debaters, coaches, teammates, fellow judges, parents, and fellow students of the debaters listening on, and the wider audience, a wonderful country of Jamaica. As Michelle has said, it was very difficult coming to a decision as both teams presented very strong, very sound arguments. They did a lot of research and their arguments were one that would awaken your cognitive senses. I must say their style, their analysis was really, really impressive. As judges were faced with particular factors that we must consider, did the debaters address the topic directly? Did they understand the basic issue? Did they clearly explain their position? Were their cases convincing and did they complete it with evidence? Did they explain the other side's weaknesses and did they directly respond to the other side's critique? In examining these factors, we look at individual debaters. So representing St. George's College, Imani Rodin, which I believe was the first speaker, she had very strong definitions, strong arguments with evidence, great analogies, I must say, or the judges and myself have decided that. She cited good examples. I remember her speaking of some vendors in Ocho Rios not getting good business or benefiting from cruise ships that are in port. But in analyzing the debaters, we cannot only look at their strengths, we must as well assess their weaknesses. I believe Ms. Roden spoke of, of to, the experience that tourists really come to Jamaica for, or what tourists would want, is to experience genuine culture through music and dance. And we disagreed with her with that because that is not primarily what they want to experience. The second speaker, Jordan Anna. Very good analogies. However, we found that 
she was a just a tad bit inaccurate as it relates to craft markets being replaced by chicory and farming and the craft market draining on the economy. Mr. Fagan, Javon Fagan, his style, his gestures, his voice, overall, how he presented himself was impressive and his arguments, he reiter reiterated the arguments of the first and second speaker. In looking at the Glenmuir debaters, Danicia Lewis, she spoke of the economic value, the contributions, the revitalization of the culture or the linkages in the economy, how extremely valuable craft markets are, the tangible pieces of culture that tourists can return with when they actually access the craft markets. How it channels revenue, creates jobs, derives, there are very many benefits that can be derived from the craft market, sorry. She provided evidence and vast research, empirical evidence as he speaks to that. However, the evidence that Ms. Lewis presented, we can agree was a bit obsolete. That is what her research stated. I believe it went to 2000, it stopped at 2015. She mentioned 2021, but not much research or evidence was presented as it relates to current year. Nauma Smith, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct, Ms. Smith. My apologies if I'm not. She likened artisans to craft traders. And there's a distinct difference between the two. Artisans are producers. Craft traders in many instances are producers as well, but primarily they are sellers. I believe she had her strength. She spoke at the value again of the craft markets. Money not only important, fact was the social economic contributions to the economy. Miss Tadisha Dawkins reiterated how valuable the craft markets are, addressed the social economic benefits, how it provided jobs, souvenirs generates return guests. When examining the rebuttals, we found that Ms. Imani Roden was very strong with the rebuttal. She scored maximum points or more points rather as she, in recognition of the arguments, the methodical demolition of arguments, her style, her gestures, voice and stance. And that is how we as judges analyzed and assessed rather each individual debater, we deliberated, we collated our scores, and we were able to come up with the victor. So for this competition or this match, we found that the winner is St. George's College with points of 1,047 and Glenmuir High, 972. We found that the best speaker is Miss Imani Roden from St. George's College. We would like to say on behalf, or I will say on behalf of the other judges and this competition, congratulations St. George's College on being the winner, but congratulations as well Glenmuir High, you put up a real good fight. Congratulations to both teams. I'm not sure if any of the other judges would like to add anything to that. Thank you very much. Yes, Miss. Uh, right now. Kenya, anybody else? Yeah, I concur with everything um, Tamika said. Well, congratulations to both teams. I'm not sure if the judges is the, are the judges still on the other judges? Yes, I have Mr. Wignall here. Mr. Wignall, would you like to give the teams anything to take away? Yes, so um, for Glenmuir, I think um, in terms of how they present their, their zest, their zeal, their, their vigor, you know, project a lot more. Um, even if you know you're not telling the truth, tell it with strength and vigor on the stage. So you're gonna convince people, even if you have a weak mood, I'm um, going forward in a debate. 
you must go out there and try and convince people. It's like a lawyer defending a person that you know is a murderer. But you got to go out there and defend him nonetheless. So you can't go out there and be less than convincing. You have to. You're not saying that you're not, you were less than convincing, but um, you have to look at your delivery. You have to look at your presentation and be a lot more forceful and um, look at every, analyze everything that the opponent says and be there, be there and be ready to rebut um, any contradictions. And um, remember, it's a competition and you're playing to win. So, you know, you have to go out there strong, right? Go out there fighting, kicking. I'll, um, I'll leave it at that. All right, thank you very much. Kenya Kedu, is she on still? And would she like to offer some remarks? Anybody else? Ms. Kedu has left. Kenya Kedu. No, I'm, I'm still here. Um, not much. Thank you, Mrs. Lang. I concur with what the other two judges have said. Um, just to Glenn Muir that they need to use some more recent statistics in supporting their evidence going forward. And that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And congratulations to St. George's College. I am Michelle Toller, Executive Director of the National Tourism Debate. I'd like to thank our production assistant, Jaden Hewitt and NY. They are behind the scenes. They're the ones doing the spotlights and giving you all that good music. St. George's College will now move forward to join your castle. Hi. <laughs> And uh, we have another match in a few, I think it's on Wednesday. So congratulations.